so let's start the last exercises for the semester and since there was no homework scheduled in the last few exercises I was thinking that um, since all the homework should have by now been already uh, submitted that it would be actually a quite a good idea to just go through some of the assignments and show you some reference implementations for the different uh, tasks so instead of making doing something new today we will just take the time to get an overview how the uh, homeworks could have been done so uh, we can start wherever we want um, we'll start chronologically or just anywhere uh, but let's let's just start where we are just right now that's a g as good a place to start as any so here <coughs> we have the homework from from the 7th 12th 2023 where we have the prepend insert and remove function that we would want to um, implement for our CX list uh, container object so we move the to, to here and we start so as you know we have implemented the append function which is quite easy as it just extends the size of the array and then adds one at the back. The prepend uh, function is similar but it has a uh, additional level of complexity as we want to insert the element at the beginning of the array so just growing it will not be enough. We need to, after we grow it, shift all the entries and then in the new empty spot at the front insert the new element. So. Uh, as I always like to do as much copy and paste as I can as this saves on typing we'll just copy the <laughs> prepend function the expand will be the same but here we now need to insert well we need to do two things first of all this will be from zero and now here we need to insert the shift that will allow us to override the first element without losing data so we can actually take a look into how expand works here, um, okay, we implemented it quite easily. We just use realloc, so there isn't much we can learn from it. The other way of implementing um, expand would be just to have a new allocation and then use memory move to <coughs> move the data um, from one uh, memory block to the other. But since we reallocated, that is done for us. All the existing block is extended, which is the most efficient approach. So here we we'll just use uh, memory move and um, there is actually an important difference between memory move and memory copy um, first of all the general semantics of moving means like take it from one place and kind of move it to the other so that it does not exist at the original place but when you think about um, for example how mem copy works it just makes a copy so um, you could expect that if you have uh, memory regions and you just use mem copy it you, you get a duplicate if you would use mem move on two memory regions you would effectively also just get a duplicate so uh, for the most part mem move and mem copy do actually the exact same thing but there is a very important difference between those two functions um, mem copy requires you to uh, have these two memory regions where you are uh, from 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 which to which you are uh, copying the data to not have overlapping address spaces. So, um, it the reason is that the mem mem uh, copy is implemented such that it does not uh, really take care of in which order it copies stuff. It just at the end everything from one buffer will end up in the other. Mem move is implemented differently. Mem move is implemented to explicitly work on overlapping memory regions. So it will select an order of operations which block of data sizes uh, to copy is such that it will not find itself in a s situation where it would has have already overwritten a part which it hasn't yet copied uh, somewhere which when you think about if you have overlapping memory regions depending on in which order you start doing the copying um, you might do so to illustrate this if we have let's say one buffer and then we have um, another buffer which which overlaps with the first one let's say like this and we have here data let's say one uh, two three four five six okay so let's make this better so add 
right so if the if the buffers would be independent like mem copy tag then you can copy in any order you can for example go uh one two three and so on you can go the other way around you can go six five etc it doesn't matter it will it will be fine but if those entries would be at the same uh memory then effectively you would have uh already have some entries inside your oops entries inside your <coughs> um buffer I did that much uh, and here you have like empty or let's just leave it empty and now if you s if and if your goal is to move this content here if you would start by one then you would do one then this becomes one two then this becomes two and if you are here you are already at one so you st you have again one one two two and you destroy your data basically so what you need to do is uh, you need in this simple example you would need to go from the back okay so you copy six you copy five you copy four you copy three you copy two you copy one and you don't care for those two and this is how memmove would do it now this is a very uh, trivial uh, depiction it is more complicated because um, those mem copy and memmove functions they try to be as efficient as possible obviously so they will not uh, be moving like one memory cell at a time they will not definitely not not move one byte at a time they would try to at least move 64 uh, bits at a time which would be the biggest size that you can fit in a uh, register on the x64 platform and even this is not enough so often they would resort to use MMX or AVX nowadays registers with uh, registers which uh, are special purpose registers for vector operations which can hold up to in the um, extreme case 512 bits um, so that's like um, how much is that 2 8 uh, 8 64 bit numbers or respectively much more 16 32-bit numbers, 64 um, 16-bit numbers, and so on. So the way this works is that for this m special registers is that you can have like you have a vec you have two vectors of data of a of a data size that you can specify, and then on the whole on two of those vectors the same operation on every member is being performed. So this is why they are particularly efficient because they are super parallelizable and why they are used in modern computers to accelerate spe 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 special computations but in case of memcopy it is also very uh, advantageous to use such registers just to load data to them and store it back to memory in a different location as this you can do in two operations and then you have already copied um, 8 8-64-bit uh, uh, numbers so this is uh, quite beneficial of an approach but then of course you have to take into account that if you operate in these chunks that here you also don't run in a situation where you would destroy your data so uh, memmove uh, simply ensures that the implementation of memmove will take care of all these aspects so enough talking let's start <laughs> using it memmove um, and we want to move everything to uh, the position 1 the destination and source is from position 0 so we want to move everything one third back and size is um, size obviously um, and now we, we have moved everything so this was already easy enough and now we can use here uh, write something into the address 0 and of course we will uh, increase size by one we can do it here size plus plus to indicate that now obviously the size of our data block is bigger so let's quickly uh, test if our prepend works as it should uh, let's uh, let's find a test case here is a test case so we have um, yeah let's just do the simplest case we just say and then we should have again one, two, three in the list. Uh, let's put the breakpoint here so that it works fine. We don't have any other breakpoints, so we should run until here without issues and then see 
uh, test 1, 2 and 3 being printed into the console output. Uh, did it crash? Oh, it crashed. Um, what did it break? Main. Okay, something in our print failed. Um, at which offset we can check what we printed? We printed uh, test one, and then we failed. I is set to two already. Why didn't we print? Let's let's put a breakpoint here, and then go step by step through the thing. So here we have our table. We do one execution. It should add us here test one. Uh, I should be now one, which it is. We have printed test two, which didn't work. So something is wrong. It seems our list contains invalid data. Um, let's see what happened there. So we have extended it. We want to s move. First was the destination. Oh, that's what the f I forgot here to take the reference of uh, zero and obviously we, sc we screwed the... <laughs> we destroyed our entire list so now it should work fine. <coughs> <coughs> Generally, uh, if you have ena enabled enough um, safety checks and warnings and so on, uh, such errors might be catchable, although in this case probably not since I think a data is a void anyways. Uh, what do we have defined? It? No, it's a T. So actually the <coughs> if we would have all the warnings enabled that might have been enough to avoid the issue. Um, right, so one to work. Okay, didn't work quite well. But we, we don't have all the warnings enabled since uh, we want here to have the, let's say, full experience, <laughs> uh, including the uh, potential issues, as this gives us an opportunity to learn how to uh, debug and treat such issues, which is, uh, when using C++, a very important skill, as um, you can often uh, run into problems, and then knowing how to fix them is very important. So it is still not working. So the first two elements have been copied now properly. The first two addresses. Uh, but it for some reason didn't work uh, for the last one. So let's put a breakpoint here. Let's see what's the... That so we, we have two elements which we want to copy. This is fine. We move them. That should get a three, which it is fine. And then here on the first element we do the initialization that looks correct let's see what we can find in in the in the different entries so zero um one and two well two is invalid memory expense size plus one that should have been expanded. But, um, mm -hmm. I mean, if this would fail, then we would get null back. So this didn't fail. Um, it must be some issue with my move size. We want to move two elements. Destination is one. Source is zero. Hmm. <laughs> So now, before we do anything, we have zero and one. Uh, sorry, um, and one. Um, what worries me is that it here already is uh, throwing issues. It shouldn't be. Uh, it should show us the val the content normally. Let's try again. Zero. No, but this works the same way. And one 
Um, okay. Okay, and now after we did, we should be able to re reference one, which should contain the value that was before stored at zero, uh, which it did not. One is still one. Um, oh no, sorry, that, that makes sense because we have just reallocated. That should be fine. We haven't mem moved yet. Mem move shows us the same as the other. Okay. Now we do the mem move. Now we try. So zero, we don't care because zero should be empty. One uh, should contain what one had and hmm. mem move didn't move for whatever reason. Um oh I know why. Very stupid mistake. Um of course we need to multiply um size with uh size t. We uh in this case size is like the count of the elements and not the uh size in bytes. So perhaps it would have been a good idea to call it not um size but uh, count it was a simple mistake let's see if it works now which also here by the way shows <laughs> very illustratively that it is uh, indeed uh, recommended to yeah it works fine to use names uh, which are as descriptive as can be so uh, when possible always use count for count of elements if you I'm not referring to size um, of the memory itself and use uh, size when referring to memory bytes uh, uh, directly. Um, it's also customary to use length uh, when you when handling strings instead of uh, size or counts. So uh, length would of a string would be, if it's a white string, the amount of characters, not the amount of bytes. Uh, well, but anyhow, the prepend works. So the next one we want to do is we want to insert something. So insert is quite similar to a prepend. So we just copy prepend. Again, we insert. We are inserting, so we have to extend the size by one. But this time, basically, prepend is like I insert at zero. So here um, we can exploit this information to just say index plus one zero. Uh, and we are inserting the element at the indexed position. And it's already it, in theory at least. So let's see. <coughs> uh, we go to our main. This time we will uh, do it with two. So we try to insert two at index uh, one so that we again end up with one, two, three as a result. Um let's run it. Should be easy enough. And voila. Ah almost we have a we have a memory corruption. Uh let's see why. I mean this will come from the uh three of our block, but it appears we have corrupted the memory somewhere. Uh what did we do wrong here now? So we have made it bigger. We want to shift everything to the position by one, and then we want to initialize it. Um, well, it looks correct, but apparently it is not. Yes, here we have um, we copied too much. So that's annoying. No, it's not. It's well. So what we basically need to do is from size, we need to subtract index. Uh, this way we will only copy will copy the right amount of bytes and what happened here that the uh, debugger detected this mistake is that after the data block that we requested and we got it had allocated a special pattern and when we wanted to free this memory it checked with whether this special pattern special pattern still exists there and it saw that it does not because we overwrote it with garbage and then it throw the assertion that there is some heap corruption so uh, let's run it. Now it should be fine without an error. Okay, so this works still. We go past the step, and as you see, we arrived at the next breakpoint without issues. So now, obviously, 
uh, what we could do and we should do is to improve a prepend to just say that this is um, insert item comma zero so uh, it's uh, in my opinion a very uh, good practice to avoid uh, repetitive redundant code because if you if you want your class to be maintainable then uh, you want to be able to change it later on and if you are changing things and you have many places where you have more or less the same changes to do it is easy to forget one place so the least the, the least uh, repetitive code you have the the least the least co code you have in total which means that the whole thing is maintainable also if someone wants to uh, use your class and, and read through it and understand it the less code there is the better so it is in a good practice as mentioned in my opinion to uh, create um, generally uh, cl um, classes and code which uh, even if it's a bit more complex it is uh, as short as possible because even if something kind of is a lot of trivial code but just a huge volume this will be uh, a lot of effort to read through and understand and if you want to change anything obviously to change it if you have much less code but it is, m it is more complex you might need per unit code more time to grasp it but in total usually you will be faster anyways but let's continue so the um, last uh, function in this block which we are missing is the remove function this one already uh, has a count parameter so it is um, so there is no like remove at and then remove uh, multiple but we just have one remove we are using also a default parameter to specify how many we want to remove and in this case this is quite uh, easy to do we will obviously again use memmove but this time differently we don't need to expand anything but what we will want we wa <laughs> but what we will need to do is we will need to take care of calling the uh, destructors for the affected uh, region range for the affected range of items if we wouldn't do that that would result possibly in a memory leak if the objects which are stored in our list uh, would uh, be to contain uh, some more complex inner structure that uh, requires uh, explicit deallocation so as, as in this perfect case we are using strings and strings create an internal object so if we would just uh, get rid of them without calling the destructor we would already have a memory leak so uh, it's a <coughs> <coughs> it's a perfect example so first um, let's make a loop uh, no, size size t oops e this equals index so we start at index and we go for um, e is less than uh, index plus count I plus plus. We should have maybe also like a s safety check just to ensure that this. So if this is more than um, M size, if this is more than M size, so someone wants to remove too much. There are two. There are two cases. First case is if index is bigger or equals um, m size this is already a no go so return we don't we don't need to do anything and we cannot do anything it just bail out because we wanted to remove an index that does not exist at all so there is nothing we can do and here obviously mm, in this case so if uh, index is plus count is greater than size so if index would be so if index would be equals uh, one less so okay. if index would be equals size um, and count would be one that it would be too much if index would be one less that size and count would be uh, so uh, again we cannot enter here if index is the same as size so index can only be one less than than count sorry index can be one less than size or more than one less than size but it cannot be uh, size or greater so at this point when we add one to it this would be a valid case so we have the um, greater and not the equal sign and now uh, if count would be one that would be fine we would not fall into this case but if count would be greater than one or 
10 or whatever then we are in this case and what we now want to do here is we want to uh, change count to be correct so we just take a uh, size minus index so we just move index to the other side of the equation and this gives us a count which will so we can specify for example remove uh, starting index count minus one minus one since it's unsigned is effectively max value so it's a big number. In 32 bit it would be 4 billion, in 64 bit it's 16 exa something something. So uh, we can easily use this method to then just remove everything after a given index simply by specifying the starting index and here min minus 1 and the count will be automatically ad adjusted by this uh, condition to uh, the right max value for the current um, object we are in. So here now we need to um, do the destruct, destruct call. Uh, we will need this um, special case. Oh, that's a bug. Mm. Size T. Uh, right, where were we? <laughs> Remove here. And we don't need to change the content, this is just fine. As you remember, we implemented it such that if we if we have objects which size itself is less um, or equal uh, pointer size, uh, then uh, we will use this, um, we will use the entry in our table directly as the data block, such that we don't need to um, allocate extra memory. And if, we s if the object which we had is bigger, then we need to allocate memory and in this case we will here now um, just use delete on that address stored in the table and that's it. So the last thing we need to now adapt is the mem move. So um, let's take a look on how this looks. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and let's say we want to remove zero, zero, one, two uh, and we want to remove two of them so our arguments would be two two so we want to remove uh, those two elements so we want at the end our list to be oops, I can just copy this um, oops, so we see that the initial part is unchanged so as destination, we take the address of index of the next element. So destination is index, and source will be index plus count. And the the amount of elements to copy will be the whole size of the thing minus index plus count I think because that makes sense so we want in this case just copy those two elements so if index bring brought us here count brings us there then index plus count is the um, amount of elements we want to copy and remove the elements here in the middle so this should work and we'll just try it out by trying to remove the entry number uh, 2 I mean why not list punct oops remove um, right uh, no we want uh, remove at index one and count one so uh, that is fine it's the simplest case we're only removing one entry but if it wants w works for one entry it should uh, didn't work and we crashed Ooh, uh, <laughs> why 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 um, right so it managed to uh, oh, sure, 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 sure. Mm, we forgot to adjust the size. Obviously, we need to. Uh, first of all, we don't size plus plus. That w that's a copy paste mistake. And secondly, size minus equals count. We need to rem remove the amount of elements which we have removed. We have forgot to do that before. So now, run it again, and voila. Uh, we arrived at the breakpoint just fine. The second element was removed. We can continue the next breakpoint. We don't get any memory corruption. So 
Um, let's improve this slightly. Okay, so that was already the reference implementation for insert, prepend, and uh, remove. Let's see what would be our next to do. And so let's look look for to dos without case and all words, whole words. Uh, what was that? Uh, meta? Mm. Find and reverse find. Okay. Anything else? Ah, copy constructor. Okay, that's obviously trivial. Now we already did that. Um, so this can go away. Uh, yeah, this assignment, the same thing, we have already did that in one of the earlier lectures, since we needed it for our versions. Yeah, we did not implement uh, the string to use uh, copy and write semantics. Uh, we could do that, that wasn't the homework, but we could do it. Here we have again reverse find. That is not interesting. Uh, split two. Okay, this. With this we could implement. This is a nice function, quite useful. Uh, what else do we have? Um, so we have uh, split, and we have. Uh, okay, we don't have split two, but we have join. So we have already implemented some of that functionality so we could um, here implement the split two this is uh, always uh, fun uh, to do uh, I assume we already have find, yes we already have find implemented <sighs> yep so the way we implement the split two is um, quite easy. We want to uh, first of all find. Uh, do we have R find? We don't have R find. We need R find if we want the second option for the uh, split two. So in this case, let's first implement reverse find. I mean, let's maybe start with this, and then we then we continue with R find. So, um, size t pos is equals uh, reverse question mark R find uh, separator. Oops. Um, or if we um, or if we don't use reverse, then just find. Separator. Then if um, pos is equals equals minus one. So if we haven't found the sep separator, the default um, behavior will be just to return um, the string as is. This is reasonable. We just return the string as it is. Uh, for the second one. So we should return this empty string like this, since we might have, uh, I think string was a string x was a template, so we can have different uh, types. It can be a white string or a narrow string, and if we would use here the narrow string, then this code would not be generic uh, amongst uh, all the supported types. This approach here is generic, so this uh, helps us. We could of course have say that if we have used R find, uh, sorry, if we have used re uh, reserve reverse uh, <laughs> reverse, then that we want to return the string in the second argument. But I usually find it more convenient to m to define it the way we did it here, so that uh, we always get an entry in the first element and we get a or none entry in the second. So we have to check for that. So now if we have found it. Um, you know, we have to split the string, so mm, we can just create use substring to do that. So position will be uh, for the first element would be position 
uh, sorry, uh, will be zero until position. End position kind of acts as count, so we don't need to change anything here. And for the second entry, uh, substra uh, will be we start at position until well mi minus one, but po we don't want the separate itself, so we make position plus one. And I just noticed we also have here the trim um, option. Uh, did we implement the trim? We have implemented trim, so very nice. Uh, of course, again, the question is should we trim in this case here? Uh, in principle, yes. So let's do it trim. Then this uh, trim double point yes. In this case is trim question mark time. The code is a bit redundant. We could, in principle, uh, put it into uh, a temporary variable. But since we don't use copy and write on the strings, that would be actually not great. It would make a big difference anyway, since we are wasting time creating a lot of temporary vari variables here anyways. Uh, what, for example, is used sometimes when handling strings uh, and portions of strings is that you create a element called a string view, which can be used in place of a string, and it works such that it has a reference to the original string from which it is a view of, and then um it just contains additional variables with an offset and length so a string view is just a basically a string view is the r is what would be the result of a of a substring but without actually copying the whole string and creating a substring the downside of a string view obvi obviously is that w if you would to modify the string itself then the string view would uh, became invalid or it or it would point to something uh, wrong so the solution here would be to use um, uh, to use a copy and write mechanics and just let the string view also ha hold the reference on the original internal string. So if you would try, sorry, you would try to modify the original string, then you would actually then create a whole copy of the whole string. So at this point, uh, it is memory-wise a bit wasteful because then your string view even though it might be just uh, one word from a whole page of text or whatever, there are no limits, except what fits in your memory. Um, and then your um, string view, even if it only still needs this one word, it would still hold on to a reference to the whole object, which may be arbitrarily large. Um, generally speaking, in modern systems, uh, memory is cheaper than computational power. So if you can save on computation by throwing memory at a problem, uh, you should do it. And especially with string views, this is very beneficial because string views normally only are used in a, in a transient way, so they will not uh, stick around in your application forever. They are just rather used if you are passing arguments or operating on strings and passing them while you are passing them and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so this much to string views here. As mentioned, we don't have it and we also don't have time to <laughs> try to implement a, a string view of our own. But except for uh, R find not being yet uh, implemented, this should work fine. So let's get our sample code um, and let's try it out. Main is here. Uh, we have our CX string, uh, substring, find, test vector, tf, yeah, somewhere here would be a good place to. Uh, Characters um, strich punkt, strich punkt, strich punkt. Auto A, Auto B, and here, uh, what is it complaining about? Um, we are 
probably already used test somewhere. Test, yeah, we used test at the top, so. But that should use it here, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, what are we returning from this here? We are returning a pair, that is also fine. Um, this is... Oh yeah, this is the problem. Wait, pair? Ah, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's completely in white code. That was just to show what should be the return. So this is fine, and then here, um, something. Just something that we can put a breakpoint on. It. Actually, may, we might be able to put a breakpoint on the closing brackets if it's C++ and we are going out of scope. So if we would have a, just the brackets without a uh, variable that goes out of scope, we couldn't break on the closing brackets, but since we have something that for which the destructor will be called, this bracket here will get some code created for it, so we should be able to break on it without the need to create a separate um, Okay, something uh, didn't went quite as expected. We got some memory corruption here. Probably the string didn't exist. No, well, let's see. Oh, len was minus. Why was it minus? One? Well, len was one minus one. That was intentional. He was so. Ah, uh, yes. So, what happens here is if we actually leave it at minus one and you take pos plus minus one. Um, what kind of happens is that uh, the value, the resulting value of this mathematical operation is bigger than what would fit into uh, the variable and then the highest highest order bit is cut off and then you get a very low value. So uh, what we would need here is actually a, a test that pos is equals equals minus one or, or this is the case. And yes, if you would have like land being minus 2 or something very close to, to this value, it we would still run into this scenario, but we would expect uh, land to n not be so close at the limit anyways. So here, this should already fix our bug. Let's see. Uh, it looks like it did. Let's see if, um, if we have still access. Yep. So the first contains path uh, yeah, the first one is C and the second is the path on it. That works fine. And f for B, which we should have. Uh, that failed. From reverse, we wanted the separation here. Oh, right, sure, it failed because uh, we don't have the reverse find which is used for the B case. So now we will want to implement the reverse find. Just pass by both contain the same data that I wouldn't have expected, but it may depend on what we have put in. What, what does what does we R find return as a failure minus one? That is actually correct. So here we have some sort of problem. As we are running in this scenario. Let's run it again. For the second case, we are running in this scenario because we have uh, not implemented this, and then we should just take this, and the second one should be empty. So we go out, make a step B. F first is the string, and second is also the string Y. Oh, because we forget the return. Uh, and then what happened? And then we had here C1 to pos, C1 to pos, and for the second pos plus 1 and minus 1 plus 1 is 0 and p substring 0, so yeah, so th <laughs> that's the explanation why this uh, failed. So the first one kinda did the right thing, and the second one fall again in a um, integer overflow and then it did something random and here we had as mentioned we forgot to add the return statement okay so now only the only thing left is to implement our find and let's see how we can do that so for size t i is equals um m size is size the right thing is size in bytes size in bytes including terminating length in character so we don't want size we want length um, right so we start at length minus one obviously 
since we want a pointer to the last valid uh, index so at this point we also need a uh, special case so if length uh, is 0 then we return minus 1 because if it is 0 then we don't have to search we know we won't find it and if we would try f try finding it I would become uh, minus 1 so this wouldn't be good I must be 0 or uh, greater and here we are comp comparing if um, no, sorry. here we are comparing I must be less or equals uh, well, uh, sorry I must be greater or equals 0 so and of course I minus minus we are searching in reverse and zero is the uh, that will not work. <laughs> we will run in the overflow scenario as well. Um, if we do it this way, uh, okay. We, we we can do it by adding. We can we can do it like this. We can uh, have the loop going in the right direction, and then we will have one ma one additional operation. In j is equals. Um, length minus 1 minus i this gives us a valid index always ensures that here we will break at the right point and right so if this starts at offset um, that needs to be improved as well so this would need to start at 0 we should need to start at 0 and then we go to length um that is kind of also wrong because we want we don't want to search everything if we have an offset uh, for which we want to search for um okay other, another plan let's let's stick to the reverse uh, loop but let's say that um i is allowed to be invalid so we will have n minus 1 internally so i must be greater zero i minus minus and offset uh, so if obviously if offset is equals equals minus one then offset is equals um length then we start at offset yeah that will work so we now we have an offset which is always a valid value which specifies the length to from where we start, this is then the start, then i must be greater 0 so that we have room in our unsigned variable to, uh, re to once this hits for the last entry we will get a 0 uh, as remem you remember size t cannot be negative or any other unsigned value obviously so now inside uh, we can copy our uh, well search match function but here instead of I we need to search starting at i minus one, since uh, i at m length would not be valid. So that's that, and then we of course return the index we found if it matches. So let's run it. <coughs> and now b should have uh, the path and the either name. That is not quite what we wanted. So A works fine. It gives C, it suppresses the search separator and then it returns the rest of the path. In the B case, it does not, which means that I. Oh, yes, I know why it failed. Uh, as you remember, we needed the minus 1 uh, to get the right offset, and obviously here we need to add the minus 1 as well. Uh, since we want to return the actual offset at which we looked so this was a small again a copy and paste error since uh, if you write code then you think what you are doing and then you wouldn't usually do such a mistake but if you are copying code it is easy to oversee uh, a needed modification okay so we have our path and then we have our file name and as this example also shows this is often where this split tool is, is super useful you can also use it to get an extension from from your file name um and so on and so on but anyhow so in we have implemented this let's see which other to do's we can tackle in the time that we have left so to do 
so in the list again let's see first first take first meet um yeah i don't mm, like implementing find for the list it is pretty much the same as implementing find for string just that you need to compare the entry so this is really boring um but here we have a few elements which we have not yet implemented we could add some of them thus we can take a look what what we are missing in string so left to right i mean these are trivial so why not so left is from the left position 0 comma count right is a bit more Complex. I mean, it's a trivial, but it just a, a mean square is much of complexity more than it has. So here, um, this goes to minus one, but we start at um, m m o length minus count. So if we have some length, and then uh, we of course need is here a test if count greater u length then count is equal to u length obviously uh, here we don't need this check since this one will truncate it for us ok so this is done this is done what else we have here split 2 we have already did so I can remove the comment We added this. We implemented that as well. So this is done. We are well, this never was a homework, and I don't think we will do it since, uh, as mentioned, this would add a bit extra complexity. But now here we could, um, for our list, uh, take a look for this nice helper functions here. So uh, t reference t reference. Um, First, return uh, m p data zero. Oops. I mean that's good enough. We should check. Um, we should check whether that that it actually existed. So if uh, there is no m or m size is zero, then we throw an exception. Yeah, if we just throw a string as exception, that is good for the start. Uh, last is kind of the same, it's just that we take size minus one, um, empty list as well. Take first and take and uh, sorry, take first and take last. These are more interesting ones. Um, so first of all, we cannot use a reference, so we need to use just t take first t is equals first and return first and here uh, we move uh, zero as simple as that take last is almost as trivial uh, take last and again if the element we are handling here doesn't have a copyright semantics this is not super efficient Oops, last um, m uh, size move minus one, and since last worked and didn't throw an error, then we can kind of take this as implicit information that size was larger than zero. Um, let's add this as a comment. Size would be zero. Voila. So th just that we know it later on without <laughs> listening to hold the recording. Then we have mid, right, left and right. Yeah, mid and left and right. So um, we had here. Mm, left and right. We can kind of copy. 
just that we will do a small change later here. Uh, this will be mid. And it's of course not a string, but it's a CX list of T. What we are returning. Oops, mid. Not mid. Um, nice T. Pause and count. That can be a const. Doesn't modi modify the content. Technically, left and right could also be consts, but since they go ret return your reference, we don't want them to be consts, as uh, we could modify the reference and then we would modify the data inside, so this would not be great. Right, so we have mid. So now we just need to implement uh, the mid, which pretty much is just substring. So, um, first of all, we need the. Well, we could be extra cheap about doing it, so um the the, ba the 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 better approach would probably be to um uh to pre allocate the size of the list and then uh, add the elements one by one, but we can also go um with a very uh, trivial implementation which just start as e of oops e is equals pause comma pos is less than um sorry i is i is less than pos cross count this reminds us we should add for pos, pos and count some uh, safety checks as we did here for the string where is the substring uh, there's the substring this too We will add them here, so the return case will just return the pr empty list. Uh, count, where well count? We use count here. It's len, so pause. And we don't have m len. We have m. Ah, that's a bug. M size. Size is in. S size should be count. We should have renamed it, but now it's too late. Uh, instead of len, we will use count. Plus plus count must be more size. Uh, count or size count and I plus plus. So we know now the loop will go within the allowed range of values, starting from uh, wherever we wanted until however many entries we have, and then we just use list punct append. Um this at e and that's it. And that's the whole thing. Should try it out. <laughs> Main is here. Uh where we did we use the list the last time? Right, so before we remove it, let's say we want um out of things is like my list punct mid oops punct not comma punct mid we want at index one we want only one entry and then we can remove it so let's uh, put a breakpoint here and see if it works as it should ah uh, no we have a crash somewhere right Right. Yeah. Okay. We we copy and pasted this and copy and pasted the wrong <laughs> terminating character. Now we have fixed all the bugs. Uh, this is the previous breakpoint. We don't care for that. And now here we have X, which contains one entry, presumably with the right data. So uh, we could. Um, Print it. If we only wanted one element, we can just make it zero, and then we should have printed uh, what was it? Test two to the console before we print anything else, and we did it. So, if voila, we have completed 
our container types. They are very basic, as mentioned. There, there is mm, lot of there, there are a lot of things that could be improved about them. Um, mm, mostly recommended would be, as already said, the mentioned uh, string view object for the string. That would help uh, working with the string a lot. And for the other container types, as well as probably for the string, uh, we should add a copy and write mechanics. Um, there are reasons where this might not be reasons. There are cases where this might not be advisable. So, for example, the STL library, as you may remember, does not uh, provide an, a copy and write mechanics anywhere, which is kind of annoying. Um, the reason kind of is that if you have all these um, iterators and also functions that would kind of allow you to get uh, a reference to something inside. So the way it's this, you have your um, container type, let's say a vector, it contains a few elements and then you take a pointer on one of the elements, a reference on one of the entries in your um, container type. and then you would copy this container type and then you would, let's say, modify the container type and you have given the copy to some other function to do something else. But then you have modified your container type so your container instance will make a copy but the reference you took from your container will still effectively reference the data in the in quotation marks, copy that you gave away, where you would perhaps expect that it will not change. So I act actually can write this down as a, some as a short source mockup just to demonstrate what I mean. So let's say we have a STD uh, vector int v test pushback zero one two three. One, two, three, and now what we can do obviously is we can have a int reference or an is int asterisk doesn't matter. Uh, v test number two, which then is the v test at the index of two. And if we if we now create a uh, vector v test b is equals v test. So if we would have copy and write, now those elements would contain, uh, well, those elements, this element and this element would contain internally a reference to the same internal object which would contain those four elements. And at any point here, if we now modify this, so let's say this is 22, what would effectively happen is that we would uh, modify the content of v test b and the content of v test, which is not good. It's not what I, it it is not what might one might would expect. It's something that you would need to be aware that this works this way, um, and this the only reason behind it is that uh, here the system is not aware that it gave out this sort of reference, or rather it 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 could be a word that it gave out a reference but it wouldn't know whether you are holding on to that reference still or, or you don't and this is the problem because if we would say that whenever you give out a reference to anything you set a flag that the copy will always be a full copy then you kind of cannot even access the element you cannot do anything and usually you would have somewhere here before you copy it where's the mouse here uh, a lot of different code doing things um, or here rather doing things um, which would access uh, like this individual elements and do something with them and process them and you wouldn't want this to cause your object to be not uh, shareable because if you do then uh, basically it will never be shareable 
well it is not quite true it would be shareable if you have only ever did assignments on it so if you have the scenario where you are just returning values from a function especially if you are returning kind of values over multiple levels of function calls then yes this would be still an optimization but it would be a very small optimization in comparison of what you would usually expect from a copy and write mechanism and the most important issue here not issue the most important aspect here is that modern compilers are capable of optimizing uh, the return of a complex object so if you create a local variable in your function you fill it up and then you return that complex local variable uh, the compiler can avoid the need to um, create to copy entirely this variable so in in the direct use case what 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 happens is that when you are when you when you call a function and want to get a complex variable returned what happens is your compiler creates this local variable on your um on your stack it allocates it with everything it calls its constructor it gives as first arg as the first argument this variable to the function so the return then is no longer de done through the rex register but through the first argument then the function does its stuff and when the function then returns it will call the assignment operator um, on the variable that was passed to it and then and then you are done so you have quite a level uh, I'm just thinking it might also be that it will I haven't actually look, uh, looked into it recently and I don't remember the details it might be that it does not call the constructor before the functional and inside the functional when it returns it just calls the copy constructor uh, from your element, uh, from your local variable, which would be a bit better <laughs> than uh, constructing and assigning, but it still, for the most part, would still need uh, all the internal logic of an assignment of a complex object to be executed. So, in any case, it will not be efficient. And the way things work nowadays is that uh, that the compilers can optimize this away. So, if you have a release build and you are returning a complex variable, it can to uh, arrange things such that you would be able to skip this unnecessary quotation marks unnecessary copy operation at the very end so there kind of w wouldn't be a point of implementing copy and write only to optimize this return case even though uh, this optimization cannot be done in all cases so depending on how complex your function is it won't be doable um, but in the simple cases where you would expect the most benefit from such optimization at the same time it does it so um, the designers of STL decided to not uh, risk the copy of implementing such a copy of on, on write mechanism uh, because users might do things like this and then assign something and then screwing up data. I mean the worst scenario here is that if we do this then uh, v test v would not even contain the new value so v test v would be not equals 22 if we do this because the uh, when you create a copy uh, sorry mm, now initially it actually would be if we haven't changed anything because then they are still sharing but if here we would first do something to vtest that is writable like vtest1 is equals to 1 I don't know, 11 doesn't matter so if we do something first then at this point it copies a it triggers a copy and since then object can by default before everything just manipulate itself uh, it means that even vtest was the original owner of the, el of the element which is now referenced here uh, vtest will create its own copy and leave the element the thing it owned before to the copy vtest b and th this is why then here um, if we would do this test so actually before this test this would evaluate even true bec because the elements are still shared and th and the copy on write is not triggered even though we write because it doesn't know uh, because it's just a dumb pointer at this point and even if we would use a simple smart pointer that would be an element it would still not not work we would basically to fix this need to replace uh, any sort of pointers or references to elements contained within a vector by some sort of special uh, vector aware smart pointers which would then trigger the right the right copy and write operation at the right moment and this is just uh, 
just was considered kind of too in one I mean I, I I don't I want I don't want to say it was considered too complicated because if you could have done that this would be doable the problem simply was that initially it was implemented without copyright and if one would want to add it later it would need to one would need to change the whole uh, interface of the already existing classes and since it's uh, like a standard library the expectation of course is that it will not change it in the sense it might get new things added but it should never change things it already has because that would break old code so they didn't have an option to later add it on and keeping uh, the old interface would um, make such errors uh, possible and such errors are terribly unpleasant to debug because if you don't really know exactly what happened then you are just really wondering why are there wrong values in things where you don't even expect that there should be wrong values in um, and that's the story of copy and write and <laughs> why why STL doesn't use it um, for, for, for one's own application I like copy and write and but you just need to then keep in mind the limitations of this approach and I think this is a good point to stop for today and <laughs> by the way also stop for the semester since this was already the last lecture uh, so um, have, a go have good success with your um, exams and have uh, a nice free uh, semester break enjoy it don't get a cold despite it being so cold outside and uh, that's it bye bye